Hey fellas, well, I just got back from Joker earlier this, this evening, and I for one loved it, so even with all the talk about this film, <coughs> I already mentioned I'm not going to be giving any spoilers or talking about the, how, how other people are reacting to it, but on its own merit, it's not only Joe Lennon's one of my favorite versions of the character, it's I'll actually join me in this one of my favorite films of the year so far. I can actually say that without hyperbole. The story follows Arthur Fletcher, played by Joaquin Phoenix. Phoenix, a man who is taking care of his mother, Penny, played by... a Francis... Conroy, a, as the two who deal with a mental illness. This in the year 1991. And over the course of the film's runtime, I'm, and we see the care, the lead go from a simple failed comic to a violent criminal in a way that's actually surprisingly implausible. I mean, I was wondering how how this version would stack up on some of the other ones, and I gotta say, hey, he's managed to carve out another unique take on the character. I mean, I mean Romero was playful. I mean. Nicholson was gleefully psychotic. Like, Hamill was charming. Nudge was unpredictable, and Lita was, shall we say, experimental. This version depicts one that could, could theoretically like happen if Gotham City was a real place He's during that time in the early 1980s. Visually, the film was quite impressive. I mean, as I mean, even though director Todd Phillips doing them for a lot of bad howdy comedies such as the Hamer Trilogy and Old School, the latter which one I favorite comedies personally, he did a really good job at having this whole gritty urban looking feel of the movie since he worked with just $55 million which is actually relatively modest for a, a movie that's tight these days and definitely was heavily influenced a lot by Scorsese's his classic like texture and the king of comedy Hey, both of which are excellent films. I mean, also gonna let have people know right away that hey, that it's nothing personal about what the guy said. I mean, about the competition. I'm interested mainly, mainly in what people can do with the story, characters, and visuals, regardless of whose name is on the marquee. And I gotta say, it really he did it. I mean, everything from the music to the costume design to the sets, even something similar to the vanity plate at the beginning of the movie definitely gets you immersed in the world the moment you sit down. I will definitely also say that this movie is not for faint of heart. I mean, like, not to put anything, I will definitely say that the praise surrounding the dark time in this movie as well as the, as the, uh, well as Joaquin Phoenix's performance is well earned, I mean, the whole finale, Definitely worth seeing the big screen you can find. I mean that. I mean that. I think it's also gotten to a point where, or, over the past last thirty years, if not that long, you can actually pinpoint specific moments where key films have come in, and parts of the character where there's a shift in public perception. And given how the opening weekend is tracking to be a new record, or. I can once again say, hey, that much like how people under me with Venom last year, that how many people actually want to see this, like, are those going to be like, like, Bat are this going to be like Batman and Robin or Dark Knight Tension Quality, or are they going to be seeing that? Thankfully, definitely need more of a Dark Knight in terms of quality, and given my very enthusiastic recommendation of 4 out of 4 before I get into the coming attractions. Okay, so no particular order, Terminator Dark Fate, probably will be seeing that one opens in November. I already have my I have a look at Terminator Salvation ready, ready to go, but first I want to finish my script of T3 and upload that, and so I will be doing them in some kind of rough order, and, but one thing I do have to wonder, because I'm glad that on top of the new who cash crew with all the old ones coming back? But since now Disney technically owns Fox, 
Hawks, does this kind of make you a car Disney princess? If the answer is yes, I'm actually okay with that. And Gemini Man. I, while I, I am hearing good things about the visuals and action, the story, not so much. I'll probably just wait and rent the DVD of that or wait for it to come on TV or something like that. Okay, so 1917. He might be interesting. He has a World War One film by director Sky Fawcett Mendes, which is a film I rather liked. And it's got some good people in there. Maybe it'll do for World War One, but it's very right into World War Two. I guess we'll see. And so Richard Jewell. Well, I am not familiar with uh, the story, and so probably not going to worry too much about that one. And given how it's coming out, out a around the same time. I am as Jumanji in the next level, and a week before the new Star Wars, so... I mean, it doesn't look like a bad movie, but I think that's another... It didn't look like my particular cup of tea, especially for the holiday season. He's in Ford vs. Ferrari. I first heard about this, wasn't sure what to make of it, but... It's got, again, it's got some good people, people in there, and also Mangold is at the helm. Give him a highlight to all his previous films, just Logan, Walk the Line. I might keep an eye on that one, given how War is coming up as well, you know. And last, and maybe least, I don't know, who I think it was called, called The Good Liar. Wait, no, there's another one. Um, that I'm trying to work out. Just give me a moment here. Just trying to contain myself. Oh, uh. oh I also jumped in that double tap looks fun. Uh, definitely got to mention that too. So the red band trailer, I laughed quite a bit at that. At so and. Where is it? I could have sworn I saw it a moment ago. Yeah. So, Harriet. Look, I know the story is an important one, but I just have mixed feelings about trying to turn another historical one into an action movie because. I think if I wanted to see something like that, that kind of revisionist history in that time period, I think I'd watch Django Unchained again. I think I think I will when that comes out instead. So, but anyway, that's all I got to say for now. If you have more content coming to you, the next Pokemon Sword and Shield countdown video will be after my live stream concludes tomorrow morning. I'll talk to you all later. Mm -hmm.